Luffy has unwittingly gotten himself into trouble yet again. And not for the last time, I'm sure. But perhaps never so seriously as this. The lives of his crew and the genius scientist are on the line, facing up against not just a massive marine force, but an admiral and also a Gorosei member. Amidst political tension, a double case of double crossing, and an impending war, Luffy and his crew sailed into an incredibly intense situation at Egghead. Though, to be fair, they were more swept along, more so than their involvement at the future island being an active decision on their part. But either way, Luffy and the Straw Hats are now participants of an event that will go down as the Egghead Incident, the resolution of which would inflict a global shock no one saw coming. And with the developments at Egghead happening at a rate almost never seen before, we have a number of different potential scenarios for this so-called earth-shattering resolution, which is exactly what we're discussing today. Will this resolution causing global shock be as simple as Luffy defeating an admiral? Or will he cause the death of world genius Dr. Vegapunk? Will it involve the unlikeliest of alliances? Or is it something none of us have ever imagined? Because even as we draw near to the climax of the Egghead Island arc with all the big names, side stories, and still remaining mysteries, we don't seem to be closer at deciphering what this shocking resolution is. But here goes at trying to figure it out. So starting with possible resolution number one, Luffy and the Straw Hats enter an alliance with none other than Admiral Kizaru. This is a wild idea, I know. But humor me, this Egghead Island arc has been heavily underscored by a theme of duplicity and double-crossing. From York's betrayal of the rest of the Vegapunks, Stussy's status as a double agent, or even more generally, Egghead has presented this running idea that not everything is as it seems. The existence of the Seraphims, who look like former Shichibukai, our first introduction to Vegapunk being Lilith, the use of apparitions or holograms, or even the Iron Giant and the Ancient Kingdom actually being very technologically advanced far more than the technology we have in the present. It's clear that this arc is laden with the notion of appearances versus reality. So is it possible that we will see this continued and that this would even apply to none other than our current antagonist Borsalino aka Kizuru? The reason I ask this is because Kizuru's actions in the battle so far has been quite hard to read. On one hand, he's shown no deep remorse or regret at having to kill Vegapunk, easily fighting Sentomaru, whom Kizaru has known since Sentomaru was a young boy, practically being his uncle. And while he has verbalized that this order to kill Vegapunk isn't a task that he necessarily takes pleasure in, he hasn't shown real qualms about actually acting on it. On the other hand, it has also been pointed out that Kizaru seems not to be going all out. If he was serious about killing Vegapunk, he possibly could have done so by now. His battle with Luffy suggests that although the new Leonko is certainly pushing Kizaru to fight properly and show off new abilities that we haven't seen before, thereby meaning that he is certainly having a harder time than he did the last time he fought Luffy. But even still, Kizaru's demeanor hasn't changed all that much. He isn't very alarmed nor concerned and still seems to be, on the whole, fairly confident. And given it seems that Kizaru does have many a tricks up his sleeve, if he wanted to, he could be blasting Luffy with all of his strongest attacks from the get-go so that he could go on to deal with Vegapunk much faster. An argument could be that he's still feeling Luffy out, that maybe he didn't think such advanced techniques were necessary against him, and as the fight continues, Kizaru may well be pushed to pull out all of his strongest attacks. But there's also the question of his very murky brand of justice. Kizaru being the representative of unclear justice, is it possible that this has been a clue that Kizaru's morality, or at least his loyalty to carrying out the will and orders of the world government, is not as clear cut, and that maybe his long-time friendship will prevail. After all, he didn't actually kill Sentomaru, and perhaps that's why we've been shown Sentomaru's flashback, but not yet the extent of how Kizaru also became so close to Vegapunk, even prior to them meeting Sentomaru. Luffy and Kizaru working together to save Vegapunk is quite an outlandish idea, but something that might actually be the only way to defeat Saturn and the army of pacifistas that is likely to come under his control. Saturn, who himself seems to have some very powerful abilities of his own. Now admittedly, this idea is full of speculations, but it also certainly would be a resolution that has a shocking impact on the whole world. Just imagine it. Admiral betrays world government and teams up with Yonko. The next potential scenario that we're going to consider is the involvement of the Grand Fleet. The words in chapter 1078 that alerted us to this big event at the end of Egghead is very similar to the language we witnessed 
witnessed in chapter 800. At the end of the Dressrosa arc, as we witnessed the celebration of the newly self-declared Grand Fleet, we were told via narration that the members of the Grand Fleet would each grow stronger until they would eventually cause a great incident of historic proportions. Which I have to say sounds quite familiar to the foreshadowing we received about Egghead Island, naturally giving rise to the question, is it possible that both chapters were alluding to the same event? Will the Grand Fleet be making an appearance at Egghead Island, perhaps when it seems that all hope is lost? And will it be Luffy's armada that helps him and the Straw Hats and their allies escape? Well, let's consider how this would be possible in the first place. The last we've seen of the Grand Fleet is most of them being at the Reverie, most notably their involvement in the kerfuffle involving St. Charles and Shirohoshi. And while during the Egghead Island arc, we've seen Mills Guard's execution for his role in this conflict as occurring concurrently to the events at Egghead, we didn't see Leo or Sai or any of the other Grand Fleet members at his execution. So a likely scenario is that they escaped during the chaos of the revolutionaries' attack on Marijuana. As we know, the kings left Marijuana at the conclusion of the reverie on the night of the fire festival at Wano, meaning that the fleet members had likely set sail also around this time. This being the same night that Luffy would have died before coming back to life, having awakened his Nika devil fruit form. But during that period that Luffy had died, the Grand Fleet members may have seen that his Vivra card was burning up, perhaps even destroyed entirely. They may have taken this as a sign that Luffy needs help and started heading towards Wano following the Vivra card, and later, once the Straw Hats had set sail, towards Egghead. And this could be how they end up at Egghead Island, potentially being instrumental to the defeat of the Marines' forces, this defeat of an admiral and the massive number of troops, causing headlines about an event of historic proportions all around the world, shocking everyone who reads it. But in saying that, there are also some holes in this idea. But first, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. We can't all be kick-ass chefs like Sanji, but here's something that can help your skills in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and are easy to prepare in just a few steps. This not only means that you can save time with quick and easy meals that can be ready in 15 minutes or less, but also pre-portioned ingredients cut down on your food waste by almost 25%, which is good for your wallet and the planet. And if you're like Luffy or me, and you're a bottomless pit, HelloFresh doesn't only take care of your dinner, it also has you covered for every mealtime occasion, from snacks and easy lunches, but also seasonal celebrations and festive gatherings, which is something I really appreciate about HelloFresh. You're able to customize the service to suit your dietary and lifestyle needs, and their website makes this super easy, which is great for someone like me who needs to specifically search for gluten-free food. So to sign up and get a special discount and support this channel, click my link below or scan the QR code or use my code. Cooking delicious meals has never been easier. Thanks HelloFresh. Now let's get back to the video. That first hole being that after Luffy awakened his devil fruit at Wano, the Grand Fleet should have seen that Luffy's Vivra card stopped burning. Unless because Luffy did technically die, the Vivra card completely disintegrated. But even in that case, pretty soon after, they would have seen via news that Luffy had actually defeated Kaido and Big Mom and has become a Yonko, meaning that he's no longer in danger. And so it's likely that they may have decided it was no longer necessary to come to his aid after all. Secondly, the words in chapter 800 is that the Grand Fleet will eventually cause a great incident of historic proportions, which for me suggests that they themselves will be the driving force behind a massive event. And now the nuance in the translation may be wrong, but in my head, being merely involved at the Egghead battle is quite different to being the culprits for causing some great incident. Now it is possible that they do something that will actually cause some major event upon arrival at Egghead, as opposed to merely just helping out during the battle. But otherwise, the two just doesn't feel quite the same. Or is that me just being pedantic? Let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you like some of the ideas discussed so far, then make sure to subscribe and give me a like. Thirdly, an argument could be made that the events of historic proportions has already occurred. That event being the execution of Mosgard. Sai and Leo's intervention during St. Charles's attempted kidnapping of Shirohoshi and Mjolsgaard sanctioning their actions has, as we know, resulted in the execution of Mjolsgaard at the hands of Figurland Garling, the supreme commander of the Holy Knights. And this is the first time that we've witnessed the Holy Knights intervening in matters of the Celestial Dragons, and certainly the first time that we've seen execution of one of the Celestial Dragons in such a manner. And apart from the fact that there was no narration box confirming that this is indeed the great incident that was being referred to and seeded all the way back at Dressrosa, I would personally consider this an event of 
of historic proportions. But in saying that, if this was in fact that event that Chapter 800 was alluding to, I would imagine that there would be more buzz and attention paid to it. So maybe some of the Grand Fleet's involvement in the affairs at the Reverie is not the event foreshadowed at the end of Dressrosa. But if it's not the arrival and the involvement of the Grand Fleet at Egghead, another group that could become relevant and could be the cause of a resolution of the Egghead incident that would shock the entire world is that of the revolutionaries. I haven't seen this idea being talked about, but is it possible that we could see an alliance between the pirates and the revolutionary army? So hear me out. We know that Dragon and Vegapunk are longtime friends, and that Shaka spoke to Dragon very recently, letting him know that he thinks that they're in trouble and that they may even die in the not so distant future. And there have been so many other crazy developments since that phone call, we haven't really had a chance to consider what else this conversation entailed. For example, I find it personally quite interesting that the last thing we see Shaka say is that he wants Dragon to hear him out. Hear him out about what? Is he explaining what happened to Kuma? Why Vegapunk did what he did? How to undo Kuma's programming? Or maybe telling Dragon about everything he's uncovered thus far about the Ancient Kingdom, about his research on an infinite energy source, all the details about the mysteries of the world that he's been able to find out so that the revolutionaries can act upon this information against the world government. Something like a contingency plan for what to do after the Vegapunk's death? So I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here. But in any case, after this conversation with Shaka, Dragon may have realized that intervention at Egghead is necessary, and we may just be seeing the revolutionaries also becoming involved in this battle just to add to the chaos. This could result in the first formal Pirates Revolutionary Army Alliance, and if they successfully defeat Kizuru, Saturn, and the rest of the Marines, I do think that news of such an alliance and what they achieved would indeed shock the rest of the world. But the caveat here, and a big caveat at that, is that most of the leadership of the revolutionaries, including Dragon, Ivankov, Sabo, Bello Betty, and the deputy commanders, have all been seen to be at the Kamabaka Kingdom and concurrently to the events at Egghead. And given that Momoororo Island is in the Grand Line, whereas Egghead is in the New World, it would take a long time for them to get to Vegapunk. But even without either the Grand Fleet or the revolutionaries' help, it is entirely possible that Luffy would still defeat the Marine forces and find a way to escape Egghead, saving Vegapunk as planned. Ultimately resulting in a big news with the headlines, Yonko defeats Admiral, plastered all over the world, which would certainly cause a lot of shock. As far as I know, we have never seen a Yonko outright defeat an Admiral, even with Whitebeard at Marineford or Shanks' interaction with Yokugu at the end of Wano. We can't really say that these were actual battles that ended in the clear victory over the respective Admiral. So if Luffy were to somehow defeat Kizuru here at Egghead, then this would indeed be a shocking resolution for the public that they didn't see coming. After all, the Admirals are considered to be the strongest officers of the Marines, the most powerful individuals in the world government service. For the youngest, newest Yonko to defeat an Admiral would be a crazy feat that would send the world spiraling. And with the way the fight's going so far, I do somehow struggle to see how Luffy would achieve an undeniable victory over Kizuru, who is currently performing far too well for my comfort. But that could all change in the chapters to come, or even if Luffy doesn't manage a definitive win against the Admiral. It could be that his ability to evade Kizuru with Vegapunk in tow could be characterized as a victory, especially by sensationalist Big News Morgans, and this could be just what the public believes. A news perhaps even more shocking than Luffy defeating an Admiral may be that Luffy defeats a Gorosei member. St. J. Garcia Saturn is anticipated to be a major participant in the conflict at Egghead, playing not just an authoritative role, but an active combatant in the battle. This could result in the showcasing of his devil fruit or other mysterious abilities, all of which may be reported on as part of the news coverage of the Egghead incident and its conclusion. If Luffy and his allies is able to defeat Saturn, this would be the first time we, or as far as we know, anyone in the world has witnessed such an event and would definitely cause shockwaves. After all, the Gorosei hold the most powerful position in the world. Indeed, save for Imu, whom only a very select few individuals are aware about, the Gorosei sit at the top of the world hierarchy. But something that is somewhat unclear is whether the general public are even aware of the Gorosei's existence to get shocked about Luffy defeating one of the Gorosei. I'm going to guess that they do, seeing as many of the Marines, including foot soldiers, not necessarily only admirals, have had interactions with them, and even outside of the Marines, Shanks and Cobra are obviously knew of their existence 
existence. Although these two are pretty bad examples because they're both individuals of high status and generally more aware of the world's law. But in any case, the widespread reveal of one of the Gorosei's powers and Luffy's victory over one of the heads of the world government would indeed be a massive earth-shattering event. But another possible scenario is that Luffy kills Vegapunk. Not actually, of course, but he may very well be blamed for doing so. Upon finding out that Luffy had become involved in the Egghead Island affairs was a cause for yet another massive headache for the world government. But this is one that they might be able to use to their advantage this time. Rather than revealing that they executed Vegapunk, a well-known, celebrated figure for his contributions to science, which for all intents and purposes, the world government would have previously praised as being the brains behind inventions that would eventually rid the world of the seven warlords that caused so much trouble, or generally bolstering the marine's forces, which for the general public, equates to better protection against pirates. So to kill off Vegapunk, a public figure, could cause further discontent amongst the general citizens, where already the flames of revolution are spreading. But say they blame Luffy for killing Vegapunk. This could be a kill two birds with one stone kind of scenario, where Vegapunk is eliminated without the world government attracting widespread scorn. This would also mean that Luffy's bounty probably goes up, in turn attracting more opposition and number of people coming after him. But this of course rests on the fact that the marines do indeed succeed in killing Vegapunk and that the truth doesn't get to Big News Morgans who, as per his own words, has journalistic integrity and would therefore report the truth of the matter, thereby foiling the world government's plans. Speaking of foiling the world government's plans, it's that this shocking resolution could somehow involve the revolutionary come warlord, come cyborg and celestial dragon slave Bartholomew Kuma. Since the beginning of the arc, Oda has been suggesting that Kuma will be a pivotal figure. And although so far his unreadable actions has been occurring parallel to the events at Egghead, not quite intersecting, this may all change in the chapters to come and Kuma may become directly involved in the affairs at Egghead Island. Given the world government's understanding that Kuma had been programmed to follow their demands, his demonstration of his ability to act independently has already come as a surprise. As of now, Kuma is determinedly heading towards an unknown location, but given everything else going on in the arc, especially involving his daughter Jewelry Bonnie, chances are he's on a mission to get to Egghead Island. At which point, Kuma may proceed to assist Luffy's alliance, which may completely change the tide of the battle in their favor. Or with Kuma's devil fruit, it's possible that he harnesses some groundbreaking ability that we have yet to witness, and once revealed, will absolutely shock the entire world as well as the entire fanbase. And the final potential scenario that in my opinion may come as the greatest shock to the public is the truth of the ancient kingdom being in fact a futuristic kingdom and the existence of the Iron Giant. As we know, the Iron Giant was created around the time of the Void Century, most likely by the ancient kingdom. 200 years ago, it appeared out of nowhere to attack Marijoie before running out of energy to actually cause any real damage. This fact, however, seems to be kept a secret from the rest of the world as the world government ordered the destruction of the Iron Giant. Although scientists chose to study it in secret, the robot eventually being passed on to Vegapunk. Now, after 200 years, the Iron Giant seems to have awakened again. And although this is for yet unrevealed reasons, all clues point to it being connected to Luffy's Nika form. So the Iron Giant may be able to play an actual role in this battle, powering on enough to defeat the overwhelming pacifista force that will likely soon come under the control of Saturn, as well as the other Marines' forces, allowing the escape of the Straw Hats with Vegapunk. And if this fact is revealed to the rest of the world, this will then also mean the reveal of the fact that such an Iron Giant exists, and that possibly that the Iron Giant was created during the Void Century, meaning that the Ancient Kingdom was actually capable of such technology all those centuries ago. Basically, the same series-changing revolution that we fans received when we found out the truth of the Ancient Kingdom, now being experienced by the world of One Piece. A resolution that would shock the whole world indeed. Now those were some of my thoughts on what the potential earth-shattering, groundbreaking resolution that would shock the entire world could be. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. Let me know if you have some other potential scenarios because I'd love to hear about them. Make sure to like the video and please hit subscribe for more One Piece discussions. Thank you all as always for listening to another one of my ramblings and thank you to our channel and Patreon members for your continued support. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.